You know, I was There's reviewing no this. Thing. I was previewing the show on Observer Live today, and I thought, man, let's see. It's WWE TLC, and we got all these different matches here. I got a great idea. I know what we can do for the show. The show ends with Drew McIntyre versus AJ Styles in a TLC match. And they've already told us it's Drew, AJ, Miz, Morrison, and Omos. It's like a four-on-one match, and they're all going to go after Drew, and Drew's going to, like, overcome the odds, beat all their asses. Miz is going to try to cash in. Drew's going to fuck up his cash in, and he's going to go up and he's going to get the belt, and the Christmas TLC show ends. Happy ending. Everything is great. That'd be nice. I thought, man, oh, man. It's like Vince does a lot of weird shit, but I can always, like, he always has some sort of happy ending around Christmas time. They do all this heat for months and months. Like, it was it was uh, two years ago this week that they came out and they did that speech about how, we're sorry, the show sucks, we're going to turn it all around, we got all these ideas, and of course they didn't. But then, you know, there was like happy endings, TLC and this and that and everything like that. So, they open with Drew and AJ. And they actually fucking did everything I thought that they were going to do. But when it was over, I thought, well, now what? What the fuck's the main event? I mean, Kevin Owens can't be winning. I started thinking about it. Is fucking Kevin Owens going to beat Roman Reigns? I mean, they beat him like a fucking drum at the, at the SmackDown show. I mean, you couldn't have made the guy look like a bigger geek. They just destroyed this fucking bloke. So, you know, if it were any other company, you'd think that he was winning the title of the pay-per-view, but the odds makers put him at a fi- 1 in 15, or, or, or 15, whatever it is. 15 to 1 were the odds in favor of Roman Reigns. 15 to 1. And then, get ahead of myself here, but they start doing that match, and I realize, holy fuck, they're ending this show with the Firefly Funhouse match. Bray White's dead! The Fiend has been burnt to a fucking crisp. That's what happened. I thought. What the fuck are you laughing about? He burnt him to a fucking I'm crisp. I'm laughing because the Fiend is burnt to a fucking crisp. That's funny. Well, it's time. It is. <laughs> Put this off for as long as we can. Let me say something before you even get to the match. So, they announce on social media, on like Thursday... That Bray, that the Fiend, I'm sorry, not Bray White, the Fiend, they're two different guys. They're very mm-hmm. clearly two different guys, yes. The sure. Fiend is going to face Randy Orton in a Firefly Inferno match. Now, on Raw, to set this up, Randy Orton burnt Bray Wyatt to a fucking crisp. Uh-huh. But it turns out that the Fiend leaps out of nowhere and he kills Randy. So what we're supposed to believe is that he's impervious to fire. So keep that in mind when we review this goddamn match. I see. So on Thursday, they announce it's a Firefly Inferno match. I'm like, okay, well, I presume it's an Inferno match, but they put the word Firefly in front of it, so what the fuck is this match? I watch all of SmackDown. No hint of what the rules are to a Firefly Inferno match. I do the show with Dave last night. Dave, did they mention what a fucking Firefly Inferno... Nope, didn't say a thing. So why don't they tell us what the fucking match is? He says, and I quote, it's top secret. (laughs) Which, first (laughs) off... (laughs) First off, it's like, so you want to sell the pay-per-view on a stipulation, (laughs) but you're not going to tell us what it is. Uh, That's... That's like the That's, dumbest fucking thing I ever heard. A top secret stipulation. You know what that is? You know what oh, that is? genius. It's fucking Taboo Tuesday, which you'll notice they don't do that anymore, because <laughs> right. it didn't fucking draw when you run a pay-per-view and don't tell anybody what the matches are. Hmm. So it's a fucking top secret stipulation. I wait and wait. Oh, what could it be? Fucking start the match, and they explain. It's a match where you have to light your opponent on fire. Right. I was like, that was the fucking top secret. You couldn't fucking tell us that on SmackDown? God forbid you told us on SmackDown that you had to burn your opponent. Let's keep it fucking secret, and you'll watch the show, and then we'll tell you. 
Why is this so fucking hard? Everything they do, they make as hard as they possibly could make it. It was funny because in the promo package, they showed Randy Orton burning down Bray Wyatt's shack. Wasn't that last year's WrestleMania build? No, yes, the, it was a while ago. Was it? Was it? It feels like ten ago? WrestleManias ago. Oh yeah, because they had a crowd. Because they had a crowd when they put like the maggots in the mat and stuff. No, no, I'm not talking this year's. I'm talking last year's. Was it 17, 18? But wow, these all guys I know are feuding forever. Seventeen, <laughs> eighteen. We're at like thirty four. No, no, I mean no, two thousand seventeen. Oh, I see. Dude, can we just talk about this fucking match? Well, it's important to remember, this may not even be the worst match Randy Orton and Bray Wyatt have had together. Oh, for sure it wasn't. Sure. For sure it wasn't. It was just a dumb finish. As a match, they worked hard. It was fine. I guess. So it's Bray Wyatt versus Randy Orton in a Firefly Inferno match. Both guys come out totally covered, except their head and hands exposed. In The Fiend's case, not even his face. So the Fiend, of course, is telling nothing, and Orton punches him once and walks in circles, and he stands there and giggles. Eventually, he uses Sister Abigail and uses magic powers to start a fire in the building. He uses a strap. He uses a flaming strap. He uses a pickaxe. Dude, the pickaxe is the best spot ever. He gets a fucking little axe, okay? Oh. By the way, Bray is the baby face, okay? The Fiend... Let me repeat that. The Fiend is the baby face. Randy Orton's the heel. The Fiend gets a little axe, and he tries to hatchet this guy, but the axe gets stuck in wood, mm -hmm. and now Bray's do you, stuck. Do you know what you do with the <laughs> Did he glue the axe to his hand? Like, he's stuck when the axe gets stuck. He can't get out, and Randy gets an advantage. No, the pickaxe got stuck, Brian. Yeah, but then Bray couldn't move. He was also stuck. Yes, he was trying to get the axe. Yes, that doesn't make sense. Let go. <laughs> go move. <laughs> Dude. He so was this stuck and the other guy attacked him. At this point, we are told the Fiend not only has a gas can, but the rocking chair of Bray Wyatt. Mm -hmm. Dude, that fucking thing burned years ago. And right. not even, it's not even the rocking chair of when he called himself Bray Wyatt or when he used to be Bray Wyatt. No, they are two separate entities. They do not share the same body at all. And there's, he puts Randy in a chair, and the announcers are just barely whispering. What is, what is the fiend planning to do here? I don't know. He poured gas on a fucking chair, and he's got a, a match. What could he possibly be thinking in this fucking Inferno match? Cole? So what the, what the spot is designed to be is Randy Orton is sitting in a chair. The fiend lights the trail of gasoline on fire. The trail of gasoline goes all the way across the screen to the chair, which lights on fire, and Randy Orton barely dodges to safety. Mm -hmm. Of course, they are not stupid. This was not live. This is done over multiple takes and edited all together. Yes. So every time you actually see Randy in the chair, it's a close-up. And every time the chair is actually on fire, Randy is nowhere near it. Because they're not stupid. <laughs> this was Yosemite Sam and Bug Bugs Bunny with the gunpowder gimmick. Ah, uh, now I'm they hearing that music in my head. Sorry. No, it's great. That was better. <laughs> I would rather watch Yosemite Sam than Bray Wyatt. So, Orton narrowly avoids this burning chair of death. He's using an axe handle and a chain. It suddenly occurs to me, I'm, uh, there's been a lot, and I mean a lot, of Undertaker stuff on the network lately. And there's one where he and Kane are discussing the original Inferno match. Mm -hmm. And one of the things he mentions, because they never obviously rehearsed the damn thing, just got in there and started working, they didn't realize how hot it was going to be just with their regular gear on amidst oh all that fire. Oh my god, Bray's in this giant fucking, he's dressed in a, a 40 a, pound leather coat. He's in a cow, basically. He's got so much <laughs> fucking leather on his face and on his body. Yeah. And he's surrounded by fire, mm -hmm. and he's a big dude. I was right. like, I hope this guy doesn't just die in the middle of this match before it gets burnt to a fucking crisp. So they're fighting outside, and Randy hits an RKO. Actually, no, that's even before that. They're, they're fighting outside. I forget what Randy tried. It doesn't matter. But Fiend gets the mandible claw, and they are struggling while in the claw to turn each other around and throw each other into the fire. And again, it's all done in, in close-ups, and if you watch the camera cuts, no one was actually that close to being into the fire at any point. But eventually, Fiend backs up into the fire, and they, they cut to him, and he's got his big, giant, heavy leather coat on. And who knows what else. And I'm actually watching a gif of this now. Thank goodness this is already on here. Because the fiend looks around. His arms are on fire. His back is on fire. His calves are on fire. He charges into the ring. I laughed my ass off at that. He charges right into an RKO. 
And even though we were told earlier in this match that the Fiend is impervious to pain, apparently once you light him on fire, this kills the magic spell. And now the RKO has knocked him out cold. I just like that the RKO was more devastating than fire. Significantly more. <laughs> and not only that, it's like they explain to us, the only way to win is to light this fucking guy on fire. Right. He gets lit on fire, and there's like nothing. There's no bell. There's yep. no announcement. The announcers are like, I guess he won. Guy's on fire. <laughs> but then they get very concerned because... Following a guy getting lit on fire in a match where the only way to win is to be lit on fire, Randy threatens to light him on fire, and now they're furious. <laughs> that's all ha that happened. That's all so exactly what happened. Fucking stupid. So, how dare you? Gets a can of, <laughs> he gets the gas can, he douses the fiend with it. You lit him on fire, but now you want to light him on fire. Right. That's going too far. Get in the slide of the announcer saying, no, no, don't do this, Randy. This will be an atrocity. Don't do it, Randy. Don't do it. And then Randy Ra Randy broke his will, and what a thrill. Good gracious, he lit his balls on fire. And he sets the fiend on fire. The fiend is ablaze from toe to head out to his arms. Just an inferno in the middle of this ring. And he burns, and he burns, and he burns. <laughs> <laughs> He's still and fucking burning, I'll bet, because there was nobody around to put him out. I actually have good news, Brian. I can confirm for those of you fans of The Fiend, he has apparently been put out because he's already on Twitter again. What? Excuse me, he, The Fiend is on Twitter? The, 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 the Bray he's Wyatt. tweeting? Bray Wyatt has... That's uh, a different guy. I suppose that's true. That's true. Okay. That's true. He, okay. he tweeted out... Bray Wyatt tweeted out a picture of a cocoon and the note reading, Thank you. So I guess The Fiend is dead, which would I make sure me hope. so happy because The Fiend fucking sucks. Well, you know what'll happen is he'll be gone for like a year, and then Raw will do one million viewers, and then they'll fucking bring back the fiend. That's like that's going to solve the problem. Pathetic. I hope this is the end of this character. I laughed my ass off. Like they're trying to scream to, to preach to me that I actually watched a man be set on fire and die. Yeah, I'm laughing so hard. I am laughing so hard. I needed this laugh. Thank you, WWE. They say they put smiles on faces. You know what? They put a smile on my face when they lit the fiend on fire. <laughs> wow. What are you gonna do when he's on Raw tomorrow and at the Royal Rumble when he's <laughs> like number Raw. thirty? I'm not watching Raw. If he comes out, if he comes out for the Royal Rumble still on fire, that would be awesome. He's Listen, been burning for a month. <laughs> I'll say this: when I look at this show, like as far as individual performances and the quality of wrestling. I mean, this was a good show. There was a lot of really yes. good action on the show. This was this was one of the better in-ring WWE shows of the entire year. Now, as usual, if you look at the booking and the storylines, yep. yep. a fucking atrocity, yep. a dumpster fire. But yes. God bless all of the individuals involved because they all worked very hard and they tried their best. They're just working for a lunatic. <laughs> there was one point where they actually left the camera on the dummy for way too long and he like his clothes started to like melt like you know obi-wan after getting hit with a the lightsaber from darth vader it um they could have pulled away a little bit sooner but it was it well it was what it was which was a man being burnt to a fucking crisp in the main event of a pay-per-view sure. okay sure that's how the show ended he was burnt up on the final show before christmas yeah, Merry Christmas. Well, anyway. That was, that was, uh. <laughs> that's TLC, everybody. If you love these video clips, head down there to the bottom right-hand side of the screen and click join. For just $7.99 per month, you get full access to all of the episodes. Over 300 at current count. Full-length episodes of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, and Figure Four Daily with both Lance Storm and Filthy Tom Lawler. You can also hit that subscribe button, and you'll always be alerted as to when new shows are available.